Okay, another component that we want to take care of is avatars component. So let's create that presentation section for it. And here we'll have our avatars. So let us start by going to our UI components directory and create a new avatar.view. We'll have two avatars basically, right? So we'll have one that, um, that has the, the actual image and the other one that doesn't, and we'll try to, you know, make them look pretty. Uh, so let's start by simply returning a div here that will return a slot uh, and let us define our props first. So uh, what we'll really need here? So first of all, we'll need a way to uh, specify a size. So um, this will obviously be a string. This um, doesn't have to be required. The default value will be MD and we'll add a validator uh, that will check if we are passing a proper type uh, for the size. Um, so we basically want a couple of sizes. Um, I keep doing this, this issue like this, this type of here includes value. Um, so yeah, we want to start with SM, MD and LG which is, you know, small, medium, and large. Um, then we'll probably need a name of the user. So here, we'll, this will also be a string. Um, this is required. And um, we don't want to add any more validation here. Uh, another one would be for the the image itself. Uh, so this would be a URL, so this would also be a string. This is not required. And uh, defaults will be an empty string. We also accept like a rounded uh, prop that will you know define how rounded the, the avatar should be. Um, so this also won't be required. Default value will be MD and the validator uh, to make sure that, you know, proper values are passed. Uh, we'll accept, you know, SM, MD, LG, XL, and full. Um, we'll probably handle this out of the box, but let us well, let's just keep this here so our, our the, the user of the UI package can decide uh, you know what they want to to pass here. All right, so here we will basically have two components, right? We'll have one that will be displayed uh, when we have image and we'll have another one that uh, will be displayed when we don't have an image. So here we'll display the first letter of the name. And here, you know, we would display an image with the source. And we can add an alt parameter here that will generate automatically that will, uh, you know, simply do name avatar. All right, so uh, let us actually add a couple of those avatars here. All right, so I just added those here. Uh, now we need to make them look good. Okay, so let us start by creating a computed property here and we'll create a couple of lookups, right? We'll create um, a size class. We'll create a rounded class. We'll also need a background color class. And I think that's it. So let us start by, by doing the size. Um, so we simply want to return, you know, this size. And then we'll just create a lookup table here. Uh, so again, our possible values here are SM, MD, and LG. So SM could be, you know, uh, W6H6, XSM. MD would be 
W8, H8, text base, and then for the LG, do something like W10, H10, text LG. And this should be fine. Now here, uh, we'll do the same, right? We have a couple of uh, more values here. So let me just paste them here. And, you know, this is relatively easy. We just will just apply around it and then uh, simply copy this thing here and paste it here. Now for the background class, it will be a bit more complicated. So we'll have a look up basically. Um, background class list that will contain a couple of tailing classes. So we'll have one for. Uh, you know, just, just random colors, BG green for hundreds, uh, BG yellow for hundreds, BG pink for hundreds. Let me just add a couple of those. Uh, so let's do blue, indigo, and uh, maybe red. And now um, we just want to return a random color. Uh, for the user's name. So how do we do that? Well, we need to generate um, X value. I'm sorry. Well, we need to generate an integer from uh, the name. So the way that we can do this is we can do something like char index and uh, is that name that char code at zero. So this will uh, return an ASCII value. And then we can do color index, which will just do char index, and it will return modulo from background class list that length. And this should give us uh, a typo here, index. Yeah. So this thing here should return a proper background class that will, you know, always generate the same background for the same letter. So this should be A, this should be B, and so on, probably. Well, not necessarily, but yeah, something like that. Um, all right, so now it's time to apply our classes. So here, uh, let us keep the, the conditional at the start. Um, maybe let's do something like that. And here we just want to bind our classes. Okay, so we'll uh, you know have our size class, our rounded class, and our background color class. Let us see how this looks. Uh, yeah, this should be done like this. Okay, it looks like something. Now we just need to, uh, you know, add a bit uh, more styles that will always be applied here. Um, so we probably want to do something like inline flex, justify, center, item center, text white, flex string zero. Um, select non uppercase, and I think that's it. We save that. We can see that it is truly centered. Uh, I cannot see the right. We didn't have rounded MD, the default value. Oh no, never mind. Uh, we need to this round it. Uh, add an index. So now it is returning those, uh, this rounded class is returning value, which is great. Uh, my one thing is that, you know, let's just make sure that it is working. So let's make it endo, bando, sando. And we can see that, uh, you know, it is returning the same color for the same name. Uh, we can add as many colors here as we want to. And this will, you know, just um, 
this will just keep shuffling them. So now for the, the image piece here, we probably want to apply all of those classes. So let me just uh, subject here. Let's see how this looks. Okay, doesn't. Okay, so I added a couple of classes here uh, to make it work. Uh, we should probably move the rounded class itself um, to the image tag and not the wrapper. Let's see how this will look. Uh, that's fine. We can remove the background color class from here. And it seems to be working just fine. Now, what we could also do is that, you know, let's say our app has some sort of uh, status or, you know, an indicator that users can be online. So um, maybe we can add something like that. So let us accept a new prop here called uh, is online. This will be a Boolean. It won't be required and the default value will be false. So when somebody is online, we want to add a label in the, I don't know, bottom right corner, maybe, top right, I'm not sure, you know, somewhere. Um, so let us wrap this, uh, our markup in another div. And basically what we want to do is we want to add an absolute element when is online is true. So this absolute element should simply be, you know, something like uh, a small, small, full rounded uh, green circle. Uh, so let us just make the first one of these avatars uh, online. Is online equals true. Is online equals true. Uh, so now we need to position them. So we can add a class of relate, relative at the top element here, and then make this one absolute and place it in bottom right corner. Maybe top right corner. Let's do something like this. And I think we'll need to dynamically change the size of this, of this dot. Uh, but we can possibly, you know, add a border here, um, border default or border border. And That's too big, right? Hmm. Yeah, okay, so let's create a computed class for the size of is online. Uh, so let us basically duplicate this thing here. And um, we can do something like that, I think. And we can remove all of the text styles. This size, that's fine. Okay, so now let us apply this thing here. And we'll change this to 
to the object notation. And let's save that. And maybe H2 was too small. Uh, let's bump it up. Maybe two and a half. Or even three. Yeah, that looks good. All right, that works for me. So yeah, that's the avatar element for you.